Good morning, I have IBS. I get asked about my diet and my lifestyle quite a bit, so I put out a poll on Instagram or a question asking what you wanted to know because it's a little bit complicated, understandably, and so throughout this video today, I'm going to be answering all of your questions and hopefully clarifying some things. So I have IBS, which is Irritable Bowel Syndrome. So to put it simply, Someone who has IBS can't digest certain foods. It causes a lot of discomfort and stomach pain in the form of bloating and gas and constipation and diarrhea. <laughs> it's a little bit of a spectrum. Some people are more IBS C dominant and some are more IBS D dominant. Lucky me, I'm both. <laughs> so to relieve some of my symptoms, I follow something called a low FODMAP diet. Thank God for acronyms because FODMAP stands for fermentable oligo di mono saccharides and polyols. I think I got that right. It's a toughie. That's why we call it FODMAP. A lot of foods have these carbs and sugar alcohols in them to various intensities and levels um, and are triggers for a lot of people who have IBS. Triggers vary for everybody though and the only way they can be determined is by following an elimination diet where you avoid high FODMAP foods for a few weeks and then slowly introduce them back into your diet to see which specific foods trigger you. Everyone experiences IBS differently. What might be a high trigger for someone isn't necessarily for someone else. So it's very vast and vague and confusing and very unique to every individual. I have to mention here that IBS is not a self-diagnosis. A lot of symptoms overlap with other conditions from the gut. I had to see specialists and have tests done. It's not something you can just self-diagnose. So if you have symptoms, please go and see your family doctor, get a referral for a dietitian and for a gastroenterologist. I think that's who I saw. It's like a stomach specialist. Because making those minor adjustments, if you do have IBS, can be absolutely life-changing. I've started following this diet as much as I possibly can, realistically, and it's amazing. <laughs> For me, the worst trigger foods are gluten, that's number one, garlic is number two, and dairy is number three, and then there's like a wide range of things that come after that, but those three are like the absolute worst. Um, I usually keep that list to myself because it's super overwhelming and it really like it stresses people out, I've noticed. So I usually just stick with telling people that I'm gluten free, which is the worst one for me. Um, and people have a hard time remembering that even, so. <laughs> okay, so somebody asked what was my go-to breakfast when I'm in a rush? And it's actually pretty simple. I, I made it jazzed up for this video, but typically I'll just have a piece of sourdough bread, which is low FODMAP, I'll get to that in a second. I put almond butter, I use the Kirkland brand from Costco, and then I drizzle some honey on top, and that's it. When I'm getting fancy, I toss in a banana, chia seeds, coconut sprinkles, and then you get this magnificent breakfast. Oh, it's so good. I'm, I'm mad that I'm filming right now because I want to eat this. <laughs> and yes, so I can have sourdough bread. So the, something to do with the fermenting and the leavening process while you make sourdough bread somehow reduces the FODMAPs magically. And so I have minimal symptoms when I eat sourdough bread. But honestly, thank God I can have this because gluten-free bread is not my favorite. Breakfast is pretty easy for me. There's actually a lot of options and I'm not a huge breakfast eater. Um, but it's like the easiest one. I can have eggs and hash browns and bacon or toast or I can have some kind of cereal that's like gluten-free in the summer. Not so much now because it's getting cold outside, but in the summer I enjoyed making a smoothie. I would have fresh fruit from the store and I just, I froze a ton of it. Um, and I just would plop some frozen lactose-free yogurt, lactose-free milk or almond milk, whatever I make. I make my own or sometimes I buy it. Chia seeds. Tossing everything under the sun in there and it makes a really good smoothie. <laughs> in that smoothie too, I'd often add a little bit of fiber because fiber is super important with IBS. You have to stay regular. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna sound like a six-year-old woman in this video, but I have to have fiber. It's really important with IBS that you take fiber and try to stay consistent and regular. <laughs> Just like the boomers do, I take Metamucil. But I also have just recently bought this one. I don't like it as much, I probably won't get it again, but it's, I can actually put this in my food and I won't know that it's in there, it's completely tasteless. So I was putting it in my smoothies or in my tea at the end of the day. Metamucil, you can't do that because there's a very strong orange flavor, but yeah, it's to each their own. Some people don't even like this one, like it doesn't settle well with them, so it's really, it's, it's up to them. Um, to you, whatever makes you Go for number two. <laughs> I also take this multivitamin. 
it's just a regular old multivitamin. It's nothing to do with IBS, but you know, health. So in the mornings I take that. So I'm gonna sit down and eat my breakfast because I'm really hungry and I've been talking for a long time. I take my vitamin and I'll meet you back here for my mid-afternoon snack. Okay, it is time for my mid-morning snack. I usually just take a little bite of something to go here. Today I'm having cheese and grapes. I don't know why, but this is probably the best combination of fruit and dairy that you can have. Yes, dairy is an issue, I mentioned that earlier in the video, but it's in like really big quantities, so this amount of cheese doesn't really bother me that much. Some of the other kind of snacks that I eat throughout the day are spring rolls, gluten-free muffins, or cookies. I sometimes just have another piece of sourdough, piece of fruit, a cup of tea, like there's a ton of stuff that I can eat. Sometimes I'll just eat a pan full of almonds. Ooh, I should... No, I don't eat I find it's better on my stomach and easier on my stomach to not have like three huge meals throughout the day. Okay, so somebody asked me, do I meal prep and how? I don't necessarily meal prep in the sense of putting things in like little containers for the rest of the week, but I prepare meals in advance for the, the whole week. So I just kind of pick and choose. I usually make about three or four recipes and I pick and choose what I like because I like choice and variety. I freeze a lot of food as well so that it's easier to prepare. I just pull it from the freezer and Bada bing, bada boom, it's, it's in front of me. <laughs> when I freeze food for myself, it lets me it lets me be less reliant on ready-made foods, which often have trigger ingredients in them that don't sit well with me. I'm just like anyone else, and I'll get a craving for like Pop-Tarts or something, and I will buy the Pop-Tarts. I haven't bought Pop-Tarts a month, that's not a good example, but like I will buy the thing and eat it because I, I want it. <laughs> and I know it's bad for me, and it doesn't end well. The story is a nightmare, but I just want it. <laughs> and sometimes I just, I'm tired and I don't want to cook and I just want to eat something that's really quick and easy and bad for me. <laughs> don't we all? But yeah, I'm not perfect and I still buy things occasionally, but yeah, anyway, the answer to this question, I don't necessarily meal prep. So I'm just going to enjoy my break now and watch some things on YouTube, catch up with some social media and enjoy my snack and then I'll get back to work. It's lunchtime, which is arguably the best time of the day in the entire world. <laughs> this is where I take my iron and my vitamin B12. <laughs> With IBS, I get low on these because my intestines don't absorb nutrients or whatever the way that they're supposed to. That's my lunch. So anyways, my doctor checks me frequently for those to make sure that my levels are still, you know, doing okay and everything. Please, if you are self-diagnosing yourself with IBS, do not just start taking whatever supplements. I'm not condoning that kind of behavior. <laughs> the funny thing about IBS too, though, is that it's not just about following a specific diet, although that's a really, really important component of it. There's a really strong connection between the brain and the gut, and you know, it makes a lot of sense why I have IBS, because I'm horrifically good at storing anxiety in my body. <laughs> For what use? Nobody knows. <laughs> a lot of the things that help manage IBS too are managing your stress and anxiety levels with like therapy, meditation, massages, baths, all the fun self-care things in the realm of self-care. Literally doing whatever relaxes you. Drinking a lot of water. You always see me drinking water in my videos because it helps a lot with this. Staying hydrated is really important. Exercising is really helpful for keeping things moving. <laughs> Anyways, drinking enough water, exercising, both are important, and getting enough sleep is vital. If I don't get enough sleep, I'm out of whack. It just doesn't pay off. I get really anxious when I don't sleep properly, so it's just, it all, it's just like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> okay, somebody asked such a good, good question. I love this question. I have a number of friends with IBS. How can I best support them? Oh, people can be so terrible about this. And I've experienced some weird stuff. The first thing is ask privately if you're curious or confused about something. Although I'm portraying this as a very round table, open discussion video in the internet about like very personal issues, people don't want you to bring it up at the dinner table at a conference where there's like a hundred colleagues around. <laughs> this topic often comes up at a meal time and it's, Oh, just nobody wants to hear irritable bowel syndrome over their lunch. <laughs> the amount of times I've been asked in the middle of public, 
how I go to the bathroom is astounding to me. Why is that even a question you would ask anyone? <laughs> As somebody with IBS, I expect questions because it's a really complex situation and everybody's situation is super unique. But I'm really appreciative when people respect the environment and the space and my, my own personal privacy. Somebody may be okay with talking about this kind of stuff, but not everyone, so keep that in mind. The second thing is don't yuck someone's yum. Making fun of someone's food is so childish and I don't know why people still do it. You have to respect what people are doing even if you don't understand it. I've gotten a pretty tough skin from people giving me flack over the years because this wasn't something that even I knew what was going on. It's new to me too. I'm always learning about this. But somebody who's just transitioning into this may be more sensitive or self-conscious of it and it's just like that's not the environment that you should be welcoming them into. <laughs> you shouldn't attract people to pay attention to what someone's eating. You shouldn't tell people what they're eating is gross or weird. I'm used to it because it happens so often, but it gets old very fast. So don't be that person. <laughs> don't yuck someone's yum. Hi, it's editing Leanne here. I just realized I told you things that you shouldn't or should avoid doing um, but I didn't really touch on things that you could do instead or things that would be helpful so this is what you can actually do instead do some basic research but keep in mind that everyone is unique if you're hosting a party or something ask them to bring a dish or to supply their favorite recipe if you want to make it yourself if you're going out ask what their favorite restaurants are and if you're unsure always just ask privately and respectfully as I already mentioned Okay, I'm gonna have some lunch. I'm FaceTiming with my friend uh, for lunch today. I made myself chicken burgers with cranberry and spinach, and then I have some spring rolls with tofu and veggies with a soy sauce, sweet sesame oil dip thingy. Ooh, and a cranberry quinoa toasted almond salad. I'm so excited for my lunch. Okay, also disclaimer, I don't necessarily eat like this like every single day. I just wanted to kind of prove a point that I can have a lot of different things, but there are days when sometimes for lunch all I'll have is a grilled cheese sandwich because that's all I want. Sue me. Sometimes I have McNuggets. Sue me again. <laughs> I just wanted to show for the purposes of this video that there's a lot of things I can eat. I'm not struggling, okay? Okay. 2020 is struggling, but not me. Okay, it is time for my mid-afternoon snack. Usually, I'm super, super hungry by now because I just want supper, but I am not super hungry right now because due to filming this video, I ate throughout all day today. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go with one of these little oranges, or both of these little oranges. Baba? They beep like a fire alarm. It's a very, like, high-pitched frequency, but that's not what yours sounded like. Yours sounded like a truck backing up. Good luck with your beeping. <laughs> okay, as I was saying, <laughs> I'm gonna eat these because these are just light and something that isn't gonna interfere with my, my uh, hunger for supper too much because I am making shrimp linguine with lemon and spinach and I'm really excited for it. Okay, so somebody asked me too, do I buy organic or do you not believe in it? It's not that I necessarily believe in it or not, I just, it's too expensive for me. It's a little bit out of my budget at the moment. I don't actually know if it affects IBS in any way. Um, there have been some things online that I read that it does help, but I, I don't have the means of trying it just yet. Maybe in the future I will try it but at the moment that's not an option. I also like I make a lot of my own food so I think that once I move out of this apartment which will hopefully be soonish I'll have a garden wherever I live and I'll be producing a lot of my own fruits and veggies and preserving them for the winter but yeah I haven't tried it yet. Stay tuned for another video in like two years from now where I can afford to try it. <laughs> okay so I'm gonna snack on these and then I'll see you at supper. It's supper time now, if you can tell by how dark it is in my kitchen. I also just wanted to touch on something that I had mentioned earlier. So I still can eat foods that trigger me. Uh, things like gluten, I will still get the 
super zoomed in, sorry. <laughs> I will still eat that kind of thing. But I just, I do it knowing the consequences of my actions. I know how I'm feeling at the time and I know what else I've been eating throughout the day or throughout the week and I know what can set me off. I'm pretty good at that now. And sometimes I just take the risk and I make sacrifices because I want the gluten. <laughs> If I want that honey cruller donut from Tim Hortons, I will take that stomach ache. Thank you very much. <laughs> I really try to stick to the plan that I've kind of talked about throughout this video um, because that obviously makes me feel best. And who doesn't want to feel their best? Especially when the world is going to hell. <laughs> okay, so I have a few more questions here. How do I keep meals interesting? Variety for me is key. At the beginning of the week, I'll cook two to three different meals just to keep it interesting and to give myself a lot of selection. I get tired very quickly of the same food over and over again, so for me, a lot of avoiding repetition is like really important for me. Sometimes it helps to do like a themed week, like I want to do like a Mexican week or an Italian week, I'll do that. Sometimes I just do country theme and I make deer meat and pickerel. <laughs> Whatever makes you excited because the important thing too is if you're not excited to eat the food, you're not going to want to eat the food. To me, cooking for myself and using fresh fruits to nourish my body feels really good. So I don't have much of a problem with running out of ideas. I just, I have a hard time with this pandemic thing where you're supposed to cook for two weeks at a time because fruit goes bad and vegetables go bad and then you're like scrambling to try and cook all this stuff and it's like it's way too much in the fridge at once so that's been a bit of a struggle but who's not struggling right now with the pandemic in some way or another okay how is it that canadian pierogies make you poop up a storm but not ukrainian made <laughs> i don't know i don't have the answer for you i wish i knew but yeah what she's implying is we went to ukraine this past summer sorry the summer before this one and I did not feel sick when I ate the bread products, so like the pierogies. I ate so many pierogies and I didn't have any issues. It was the weirdest thing. I can't, I can't answer that for you, but yeah. Feed me a Canadian pierogi. I'm out of commission for a while. <laughs> any funny food fails? Yeah, okay. The bean pie story. This past Thanksgiving, I made myself this pie of beans, forgetting that I had IBS. <laughs> Beans are extremely high FODMAP. I made a gluten-free pie crust. It was a really good pie. But um, yeah, two o'clock in the morning, I was on the floor of my bathroom and I did not feel very good. And I'm not gonna go into the details about why, but it was not pretty. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of funny food fails. A lot of things where, you know, I just, I crave something or my brain just forgets that it's really bad for my stomach and I just, gorge on it and then I have many regrets the next day or within a few hours. <laughs> That's life with IBS and there's nothing I can really do about it except to try to follow low FODMAP diet and live a bit of a stress-free life. So I just wanted to say thank you so so much to everybody who has participated by asking questions on Instagram. Maybe I will do another one of these in the future. This was actually quite a bit of fun. Um, it was nice because I felt like I was in control of the questions and I wasn't blindsided at a conference or somebody's dinner party about my dietary restrictions and consequences. So I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna go eat my supper now. This is my lemon shrimp linguine. Ooh, look at that. Cannot wait. Thank you so so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment if you have any other questions or DM me on Instagram. I will try to answer them as best as I can. And until the next time, we'll see you. Bye!